Well, as you can see here, we are out in the field now, and so welcome to part two in this video series about visual implant elastomer. So here I've got some salamanders that we've caught from our cover board arrays, and we'll start uh, marking them with a unique identification code. We've got a specific marking scheme we're using here. So looking at the ventral side of the salamander, position one, position two, position three, and position four are four different marking locations. And in this study, we've got five different colors. Well, really four different colors, but one of those is no mark. Then we've got red, yellow, orange, and blue. Okay. So we have our red back salamander here, and I know you're thinking, oh my god, you've put him in a plastic bag, you monster. Well, thankfully these salamanders are a convenient study organism. They can be placed in these plastic bags because their metabolism is really low. And since they breathe through their skin, there's relatively little risk of them suffocating. Nonetheless, when we're out here in the field, keep them in a cooler to keep their metabolism low and reduce their stress. And already, I've assigned this individual the code XOOY. This is coming from our master code sheet for this plot. In the cooler here, I've got ice packs. As you can see, our elastomer in the syringes underneath the ice packs. Keeping them cold will ensure that they last a long time. So let me get out an orange needle. And our yellow needle. Okay, so we've got those materials. And then the last thing we need is our alcohol swabs. So this way we can ensure that by wiping the syringe after every use, we can keep it clean and prevent infection. All right, so we've got the close-up of our salamander here. And we've got our yellow elastomer. I'll go ahead and wipe off the tip of the needle with the alcohol wipe to keep it sterile. And now I'll adjust the salamander. And what I like to do before I inject the salamander is I like to make sure there's a little bead of elastomer coming out of the tip of the needle. That way I know I don't have to apply too much pressure to get the mark to go in successfully. So then, I slide it under. Sometimes they wriggle. It's not meant to be pleasant, but it's better than traditional marking techniques. To mark the second and third position, what I usually do is I will flip over this bag, so that way position two and three are exposed. This is really convenient instead of having to try and scoot them around. I've got here my orange syringe. Once again, I'll get that bead of elastomer out on the tip. And so here I'm going to inject in position two and position three. So you want to come in as parallel to the skin as possible. If the mark's too deep, it can migrate or break up and become hard to see. But if the mark's too shallow, uh, you might not even be under the skin at all. So come in here parallel to the skin, gently apply pressure. Now for the other side, what I'll do here real fast is get his arm out of the way so that way position two is clear. Sometimes easier said than done. So get him back now, his arm is above his head. Find position one. Get the needle under the skin, gently apply pressure, and we're good to go.
like to refer to as the salamander fort. We've marked this individual XOOY, and now it's time to verify that our marks turned out okay. I'll take our LED black light here, and if we shine our individual, we can see the O in position 2, the O in position 3, and the yellow in position 4. So all in all, I'd say a successful mark. The marks aren't too big, but they're not too small that are hard to see either.